Oi, oi, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Agostino. Welcome back to another episode of the Agostino Zinger Show, episode number 98, with me, your host, Agostino. What's up? What's going on? How are you? How you do? Good? I'm feeling amazing, man. Just amazing. Amazing, amazing. It's funny what a bit of running can do to your overall uh, happiness and in, um, mental well being, right? Um, it's very, it's very, very therapeutic. Now, I've, now I realize why I used to run so much back in the day. A lot of it had to do with, you know, wanting to look sexy for the ladies and shit. But most of it had to do with just feeling well, right? Overall, like the idea of like, because every time I go out, as I mentioned yesterday, running is much harder than um, going to a gym in my experience. So every time I run and I come back, I've met, it's a little win. It's like a little, I don't matter, don't matter, doesn't matter what happens the rest of the day, I've won, all right? I've done my, my little, my little personal victory ticked it off the list because for running you know during the process of running you're in pain you've got all the elastic axis running through your body your lungs are screaming your muscles are hurting you just want to stop and walk home but you carry on you persevere and through that perseverance you teach yourself that wow i can probably put up a lot more than i thought i could and it kind of it's a good omen for the rest of the day a good omen for the rest of the week rest of the month rest of the year whatever it may be so i feel amazing i feel really good i gotta be honest i feel really fucking good um i just came back from a run i did like a, i did about two miles and a half but unfortunately my um, nike run application sometimes i don't know i think maybe i've got too much stuff on my phone i need to get it fixed anyway if you've if you've probably seen what my phone looks like get up and show, show it to you here so my phone is this right and if you're listening in the podcast you you've probably have seen it it's completely smashed right so you can see it from there on the screen it's absolutely battered the bits on here are all chipped away right near the, the kind of like um the home button has been fully exposed you can kind of see a little bit to the motherboard or to the circuit board itself so it needs to be repaired but i kind of want to just want to get an iphone x but i don't want to go on another contract i kind of want to save up and get it i've got a couple of electronic things i need to buy and and kind of save up and get for myself because at the moment i don't have anything that's working well i've got my macbook that needs to be fixed um because it's a bit it's a bit glitchy i need to get a new iphone um i need to get quite a few things actually before i get before i buy anything else you know you got you got to buy you know you, got, you have to buy these big things before you buy anything else like I, i've got i need to kind of spruce up my wardrobe because i've got some bits in there that i've worn for too many years i need to kind of re-up but i've got to buy a macbook i've got to get an iphone which is at least it's probably costing a piece i think what's that two and a half grand if i buy a new iphone from the shop right it's about a grand isn't it i think an iphone x is an iphone x a grand it must be a grand how much is an iPhone X? Let's, let's go to Apple and quickly check this because why not, right? We're here. Um, and um, so that required me having to save up and all that malarkey. I don't know. How, how are you guys with saving? I find it pretty difficult to save money, to be honest, because once once that money is saved and you've got that nugget there and you go out, you uh, you inevitably dip into it. I've done that many a times when you sit at a bar and people are talking and you're on the phone. I was like, get off your phone. Little did they know you're transferring money from your savings account into your current account because <laughs> you want to buy some more alcohol. It's fucking horrible. Um, let's see how much it is to buy an, uh, an iPhone X here because I really want to get one, actually. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see. Um, so buy. <clears throat> see how long that'll take me to save up to buy an iPhone X. Because I think a, a MacBook is going to cost me about a grand 500, right? Or a grand 600. So that that'll be about six, eight months worth of of uh, saving up two hundred pound a month, right? Um, then I've got iPhone X here. Let's see how much that starts for. Um, non buy without carrier, SIM free. Oh, it's a US version. I want a UK. What's wrong with these people, man? Annoying. Apple UK. I'm I'm gonna guess right an iPhone X hands um SIM free is uh seven hundred pounds. I'm gonna guess that, but um, I could be wrong. Actually, wasn't it a thousand? Was the whole point? The whole controversy about his phone was that it was one thousand. So it's probably a, I'm probably completely wrong. I'd like to get something. To, I'd like to get to the two hundred gigabyte one because I've I've really been enjoying the fact that this iPhone I have now is two hundred and thirty eight. I think gigabyte. So I really enjoy the space on the phone itself. So let me see what it goes. So if I'd get one, I'd probably get black. I mean space gray. Sorry uh whoa shit it's a lot more than i thought it was so um hands free an iphone x is 200, 256 gigabyte is 1149 and 64 gigabyte is a grand that is crazy isn't it but you know what's amazing right they make these phones that cost so much but they, they're still available you can still get them next day delivery which is quite cool isn't it that's what they do but jesus christ man it's a lot of money 
Um, so yeah, uh, let's see whether or not I get the. Maybe I'll get the laptop first because maybe I can I can put up with ha not having the not having an, an, an uh, up to date iPhone. Maybe I get the laptop first and then get the iPhone later. But anyway, let's jump right into it. Um, first things first. I've had a couple people message me on YouTube. A couple people leave comments. A couple people um. Um, whatever that's on social media to talk about it, which is nice to see kind of you know my content's getting out and people are responding to it for some um in some way shape or form but i guess I need to clarify my position on something because um i, I made a video uh, or on another podcast episode that i did which i cut into a clip because most of the podcast episodes i put up they're about you know i mentioned before they're a few hours long or an hour long so some people don't listen to the whole thing so i thought why not cut the clips and put them up there like everyone else does right so you can get you know a bit more traction and kind of get a bit more exposure out there and some of the talking points i talk about are people are things that people are talking about in the current culture and one topic that i spoke about was the jack master at um love says the day festival so the story where it first came out when i made the first video was uh something along the lines of uh jack master had gone to this festival and kind of you know uh got a bit worse for wear um, enjoying himself at a festival and kind of ended up unfortunately shitting into a kettle that was, that was a rumor right and um, that was going around on the internet and it kind of seemed a bit hardy ha kind of laddie humor a bit jokey jokey um that this guy got so wasted that he had to do that right and he had to apologize for the thing he had to apologize for what he'd done the venue came out came out and also accepted his apologies but also said what he did was very serious so it kind of seemed like everyone kind of dealt with it in an adult and mature way right but then um, it, the, the story kind of developed and it transpired that that wasn't only that was that wasn't what he only did. Right. There was much it was much more of a serious incident um, that I think a few of the venue staff were quite upset about and pissed out, pissed off about from the reaction online, which is quite which I, I which I admit I was part of. Because if you were, if you go online and you I think from Jack Master's Facebook page, if you go through the comments, you'll see a lot of people were kind of like joking about it and kind of um um you know making kind of um insinuating jokes about kettles and all that sort of stuff right so everyone kind of was thinking it was a bit of a joke but then i guess the whoever was affected by this whole issue kind of spoke to the venue and kind of or spoke to jack master and kind of wanted him to come out front and actually say exactly what happened the truth before they actually divulged the truth so that they could know that it wasn't a jokey matter or something that was very serious um the people didn't appreciate it and it's something that um the kind of current djing or underground culture has to kind of take more of an accountability towards and not just treat it as uh, our boys will be boys and unfortunately the story is a bit grim to be honest i didn't i didn't know it was as bad as this so the story goes on resident advisor i'll get the story up on here it continues it says jack martin admits to attempting to kiss grab people against their wall at love saves the day which is obviously a lot worse than what i first heard of the story when i first made the video um so it's, it'd be good just to kind of clarify my position on this and sort of like, you know, apologize to anyone that might have been offended by my other video that kind of made it seem as if like it was a bit of a joke, which it obviously isn't. But I'll kind of read the article here from Resident Advisor. I'll link it in the show notes too so you guys can check it out. A festival staff member has also detailed experience in a statement. In a statement, it reads, Jack Master's behavior towards me crossed the boundary of acceptability, right? Jack Master has admitted to abusive and inappropriate behavior, including attempting to kiss, grab people against the world, love says the festival in May. A member of the staff, a member of the staff who wishes to remain anonymous, has shared her perspective on the events surrounding Jack Master's actions at the Bristol Festival. Resident advisors obtained statements from her, Jack Master, uh, real name Jack Ravel, and the Love Saves the Day syst um, system, Love Saves the Day team. Following Ravel's apology for inappropriate behavior on Monday, an event staff member has described that May incident in more detail. She says Jack's behavior on our night towards me crossed the boundaries of accessibility, regardless of the fact he was clearly off his head. Myself and other staff that he hurt, offended and upset on the night spoke with the festival management and decided that the incident had to be addressed and not ignored, which I completely, I completely 100% respect, right? Because especially when you're, I guess, working in these kind of venues, you must, as a staff member working at a festival, working at a venue, a night space, whatever, you must see so much shit, right? You must see so many, uh, you must see so many incidents. And sometimes you don't have the ability to kind of like speak up about it because sometimes your management or the organizers might tell you to kind of keep hush about it just to kind of save face and to kind of, you know, this person or that, that he or she might have a reputation um, that they need to protect or a reputation everyone's well aware of that they're a fuckhead. So they don't want to make it any worse than what it is. Or maybe this person brings in a big crowd. You don't want it to affect the bottom dollar. There's other things that can kind of like, you know, um, stop people from actually reporting um, incidences where they're made to feel um, disrespected in any sort of way. But I, I really appreciate that they were given the opportunity that Love Says Day team kind of really backed their staff in this, which is quite admirable for them in that regard. Because Jack Master's a really big DJ. Other, other events probably wouldn't, would be a bit scared by his uh, status. Or whatever. And I'm sure Jack Master as well was apologetic in his sense. But I, I really rate the Love Says Day team for really backing their staff on this whole issue. Um, 
and it con- and the statement continues on Re- resident advisor the story continues um she then described or was it uh myself and, yeah she then described meeting uh, with Ravel and discussing how to begin to move forward in the meeting um oh no sorry let me continue I, I forgot here sorry yeah so it continues um she then described meeting with Ravel and discussing how um to begin to move forward in the meeting i was able to directly address jack to tell him how humiliated and upset this behavior made me feel and the fact that it's something that hasn't left my mind since it happened jesus at the end of the meeting we all agreed with jack that a public apology might help prevent this type of behavior happening again anywhere in the industry to encourage people to step in quicker and stop it so that's the fact that's the thing that i'm really i'm really pleased about this whole situation even though it started off a bit shitty right so i guess when this incident happened and jack master was off his head going crazy touching people up um being inappropriate and stuff whatever um the team that were dealing with it they knew that it was a fuck situation right so they got in front of it and they pulled him to one side and said look right before the story got out you you need to come out and kind of say what you did right because that's really fucked up you really messed up and it, it might have been the, the straw that brought the camel's back like I, I mean like there's too many guys doing this now in the industry so they finally kind of want, want to uh, address it and then when the Jack Masters addressed it like publicly in front of everyone, so he did. But when he did address it in front of everyone, he it didn't. It, I think he was too vague. Number one, I think purposely he was too vague, and I think maybe because of embarrassment, um, he just didn't want to put it out there. And I think number two as well, the venue also didn't want to say too much with, without hearing what he had to say first. And the fact that he said what he said, and then the venue made their um um they made their statement. For the general public, it made it seem like it was no big deal. So immediately after the comments, kind of steered him on the direction of like Jack Master just being a lad, right? So I think that really is what upset the venue staff. Like, no, this wasn't lad behavior. This was something worse than that. Um, this is something that the industry has to kind of recognize and wake up about. So it's something obviously a lot of them, a lot of people, a lot of event staff people have suffered in in the past. So um, it continues. Uh, 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 she says um, that she was frustrated with the response on the reverse Facebook page post on Monday that it was hijacked by untruths and lad humor, which I knew was going to happen. Which I knew that was a problem here. It's so important for Jack to clarify what happened. Revel and Love Saves the Day have ex- expanded their initial statements after their Facebook post on Monday fueled further speculation. Representatives from the festival say, given the reaction of the statement we put up Monday, the, the total representation of the of the facts and the issues worth trying to raise. It's important for him to clarify the situation and for our staff and our staff appreciate that he's trying to do this right. Um, so here's here's how it says um, here's basically her statement what happened although I wish to remain anonymous I was one of the few members of staff who was a recipient of Jack's actions on the night love says, love says the day Jack's behaviour on the night towards me crossed the boundaries of acceptability regardless of the fact that he was clearly off his head what made the matters worse was it happened in front of so many people that's the thing that yeah that's the thing that always annoys me in general about these sort of actions right um, people are more people are more cowardly than they, than they think they are right because everyone's got this idea that if they were, you know, it's that whole kind of adage, like if you were in a concentration camp, right, and these atrocities were happening to Jews, that like you would kind of step in. But the truth of the matter is you wouldn't, right? You'd gladly pick up a gun and just to, for host, for kind of self-preservation because you didn't want to die. So you'd, you'd gladly pick up a gun and shoot somebody else, right? J- j- just so you can you can save yourself, right? No, even though you know it's wrong. So that's like the mark of cowardice, right? But in this regard, it's not even that it's life. This is not as gruesome of a life and death situation. This just is somebody is obviously um, m- like well over the top intoxicated. Obviously, um, you know, to have taken, taken too many class A drugs. It's somebody that hasn't got any control of their own um, of their own body, of their own mind or what they're doing. Right. And for you to step in, it doesn't take that much to step in and kind of like back somebody up there. Especially when you're an event staff and you're somebody that's kind of low down the rung. You're not an important member of staff. Maybe the management aren't really around because they're all running around trying to make sure the event is going on really well. And everyone's just kind of like standing around, just laughing, giggling, thinking, you know, this is just how that guy is. But not knowing that the recipient of all this um, attention is having probably one of the worst days of, of their life. Do you know what I mean? It's something that they're going to remember for the rest of their life. And it's kind of rather, it's kind of ruining their experience. And no one really has the guts to step up. So that's the kind of thing that really annoys me about that situation overall because it's, it, it rarely happens. These two things rarely happen in like a closed room somewhere, right? They always usually happen. They always usually start anyway in, initially in a space where people, other people are, but no one wants to step in. Everyone's just kind of like, wait, but someone will say something or just, you know, kind of turning a blind eye. Anyway, it continues. Um, 
is that it happened in front of so many people and so many witnesses. It took far too long for anybody to step to step in and take a control of Jack or intervene in the slightest. People just stood by um, like it was okay behavior. Myself and other staff that he hurt, offended and upset on the night, spoke with the festival management and decided that the incident had to be addressed on and, and, not, and not ignored, which I'm happy again. So again, like I said, I, big, I, big, I rate uh, Love Says Day management because management aren't always like this. You know what I mean? Sometimes they just want to save face. They don't want to like... Um, they don't want to be known as I don't know as somebody that reports things. I don't know. It's just a, it's a weird culture. I've I've been there before. I've worked in events. I know how things kind of go on. It's a weird kind of like you know, um, I, I don't know nothing kind of um, vibe going on. But I really rate their, their that team for kind of backing their staff members overall. Uh, Jack agreed to meet directly with all the staff, and his actions had to affected the night to offer his apologies. And then in that meeting, I was able to clarify. It. Able to, I, I was able to directly address Jack uh, to, um, to tell him how humiliated and upset his behaviour made me feel and the fact that something that hasn't left my mind since it happened. The meeting environment was quite intense. I was afraid to see him again even though he had just reached out to me before the face-to-face to offer his apology. There was an agenda but before he was but before he start, there was an agenda. But before he had started, he had said that he had he had to do what he do whatever he was to make us feel better. If he wanted to him to go hand himself into the police right now, he would do it. Offer a public apology, whatever it took to make us feel better again. I could feel and see, I could see him feel that he completely sincere in what he was saying, and he said that he would uh, discuss about his own behavior and that he was uh, he'd been a catalyst for him to make a real change of his life. At the end of the meeting, we all agreed with Jack that a public apology might help prevent this type of behavior happening again anywhere in the industry and encourage people to step in quicker to stop it. Everyone has. A responsibility to intervene when see something that like is happening and if they don't feel they can step in they should go and get help the that response to his post on Monday was quite sickening and again i apologize for any part i had to play in it as well in that regard um in that it was hijacked by truth and lad humor perhaps this is a symptomatic of uk culture at the moment and is why it's so important for you to clarify what happened again so i guess i would like to again stress my apologies for not knowing the full facts but again i only saw the statements that came out I only saw the kind of vague statement that Jack Master came out, the fact that the venue kind of accepted his apology and moved on, and the fact that everyone in the post was kind of like carrying on this sort of like um, carry on culture, kind of ha he he comment, and it kind of just made me feel like it wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't know it was, I didn't know it went this far. I just thought this guy got too fucked and you know and did whatever he did in the kettle. So this obviously behavior isn't cool, and it kind of goes back to what I was saying about fold. Uh, our new 24 hour club or just in general what we do festivals and everything that we do right there is a big there is a big omen there is a big um there's a big misconception i think with authorities and law and government that somehow they want to stop our fun right whether it comes to festivals whether it comes to club nights and stuff that they're coming in and fucking things up for us and not allowing us to go and have a good time but i think there is a little bit there is sometimes a lack of accountability for us people that are involved in underground culture underground music culture or club culture festival culture to take responsibility for each other right when we go to these events especially the people that are uh, are behind the scenes especially the people that are in vip tents the people that go regularly to these kind of events the people that are bookers uh, management um the people that are, are dj assistants the hangers on for the celeb for the main attractions whatever you may be the people that are always there year in year out who kind of see the same because we all went to these festivals we know the same we see the same usual staff members the, the same sort of volunteers that come a week uh, that come year in year out it's really up to us to take care of these people, not um, not even including the people outside of the actual regular planet who should be taken care of to make sure that no one is doing anything untoward within uh, some within our vicinity. Because if we let that happen, that's when the fun stops for all of us. We all get fucked over, right? Because if this event happens, if this thing happens and it's as serious as it was and the girl doesn't um, is even more hurt than what she is in the statement <clears throat> and she goes directly to the police, that's potentially love saves the day done. Do you know what I mean? They... they they investigate the issue. They find out that there was a room full of adults in the room who didn't want to step in. They find out that actually there might have been a member of management actually in the, in the tent who didn't want to step in either or in the arena or whatever it may be. And they shut the whole thing down. Who then suffers? The, everyone suffers. The people that were working there who need a bit of extra money during the week, during the summer suffer. The DJs who kind of got booked there get, get suffer because they don't get to play. The people that go there suffer because they don't have an event anymore. It's really up to us to take responsibility each other and look after each other. Like we are all our brothers and sisters. Like we're all a community together. There's not that many of us. Like we go to these, the same group of people, I guarantee, I, I go to Primavera like every year. So for, well, not for, well, I've been like three years in a row, I think, or something like that along, along the lines of, right? Like there is, we go to these events all the time. I've been to Lovebox a few times. I've been to all these other festivals in London a few times. Like, you see the same people. You see the same core group of people again and again and again. If you are seeing them and they're in need and they're in danger, you should step in. You should feel, you should feel, um, 
um, responsible enough to step in and take action. Do you know what I mean? Because in the end, we all suffer if, if something does fuck up and something else go wrong. We are responsible for each other. We have to take care of each other. And we can't allow actions like this. No matter who the person is, no matter how big they may be, what their name is, uh, who they know, um, what family they came from, what label they represent, whatever it is, we must all take action and responsibility for each other. And everyone, 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 everyone responsible for each other. Everyone is because if not, then they, we're just gonna fuck up everything. Because yes, a, a police, a police, the police can come in and do a sweep and find drugs on people. They can come in and discover that people are selling drinks to underage people. But for the most part, if we take care of each other, we we stop all problems. And that's the fact that other thing that I kind of not, I don't like sometimes about uh, club culture or just festival culture in London overall. It's a little bit like it's a little bit interest, a little bit clicky. Everyone just cares about th- th- themselves and their group. No one's really kind of looking out for each other. No one's kind of extending the hand. Um, the fact, little things like littering is a good example. You're in a tent or you're in an area where you, you're all eating, like you've all kind of brought, you kind of kind of bought some munch from this food store. Instead of just cleaning up your own area, just leave it. Just stand up and walk. I've seen it happen loads of, loads of times. Or you're going to an event somewhere, you just dash the thing on the floor. There's a bin in about 100 meters for you. Just hold on to your thing and throw it in the bin. Do you know what I mean? Like little things like that just are not really looked upon. People don't really take care of each other. That's the thing I'm kind of a little bit upset about. So I'd like to kind of formally again apologize to anyone that was kind of offended by my previous video that I made before. Again, I didn't know the facts. I didn't see, I didn't know exactly what happened. I kind of just took the word of of the statements that came out when it first came out. So I kind of, for my apologies to the anonymous lady and everyone else that kind of got affected by the situation. And I hope as well, this is a teachable moment for Jack Master and everyone else involved in the underground in- industry that this isn't acceptable. We've heard, I've heard many stories of big DJs going to events, kind of, you know, blackout drunk, um, not being able to play. Um, um, and I've get, and I'm, I'm assuming now most of the stories didn't just end there. They didn't just end with someone getting blacked out drunk. I'm, I'm fortunate. I can get blackout drunk and just go to sleep, right? Some people get blackout drunk and do just absolute no- nonsenses, right? That affect other people, which is the thing that is quite selfish about the kind of actions that Jack Master did, right? No one cares if, again, I think the whole change of his life is going to do his good. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, but I think there's also a little bit of um. A little bit of a react. There's not. A, there's a little bit of a reaction from the person that does those things to kind of immediately try and go sober. I think if you're a fan of doing class A drugs, if you're a fan of doing all these substances, you just have to make sure you do them in a way that doesn't affect other people. You can't be doing these kind of drugs and be a wrecking ball and destroying other people's lives. That isn't fair, right? If you don't mind destroying your own life, if you don't mind getting high and fucking up yourself, then do it to. Then just make it insular. Do you know what I mean contain it within yourself? Like other people, like loads of. Oh Jesus Christ. That was weird. Anyway, like those other people do, but don't. Um, my little mannequin fell down. But don't let. But don't let it affect other people. That's the thing that's a bit selfish. I think that kind of gets me annoyed by these kind of actions. And we've. I'm sure like I mentioned before. Everyone's heard the stories of DJs, of people, of artists going to an event and just getting flat out drunk, um, messing up things and fucking things over. But it never comes. It never kind of gets out in the press. It's always something you hear kind of in, in a rumor mill. But think about the people that it affects. Think about how they feel. Do you know what I mean? And the fact that they have to keep it stunned because they're a nobody. No one knows who they are. Um, they don't want to uh, risk the venue not having that person be booked again because they're bringing a good crowd. Like, loads of these kind of things that have nothing to do with the well-being of the staff members that is completely, do you know what I mean? Completely devoid of all that thing. And no one takes responsibility of that. And, that's, and I think I take a huge amount of credit for, let's say, the Dave team for backing their employee. I take a huge amount of credit for the, I, t- I give the, the employee a, a huge amount of credit too for being brave enough to kind of like, um, read out the st- uh, write another statement again to kind of relive what happened and kind of you know hold Jack Master accountable. Say no, it wasn't lad humor. He was being completely inappropriate. Do you know what I mean? And it kind of and it continued for a long time before someone stepped in. And I hope now in general it's a teachable moment for everyone. Everyone can just kind of move on and grow up a little bit in this industry. And, to, and again, like I said, to take responsibility for each other. Like these festivals are few and far between. Um, there's the same people that attend them all the time. You should be able to take responsibility. You should feel like you sh- you should feel responsible for this girl. You should feel like that's your sister. That should take care of her. Hey, you can't do that. That's not cool, man. Step away. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's how it should be. And, to, like, and we should. And if it doesn't, and if it doesn't stop, we should call the authorities as well. We shouldn't be just dealing with these things in house just because we want to save face. If people don't learn and they keep doing these things again, they should be punished so that everyone knows that this thing is not this kind of behavior isn't acceptable. So again. Offer my apology and just gonna, you know, hopefully, uh, I hope the girl kind of um, is in a better place now. I hope um, Jack Master kind of gets the help that he needs to. And I hope everyone kind of reading the story knows that this kind of actions aren't, isn't cool. You know what I mean? It's not cool in the slightest. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to kind of make a short statement about before I headed off. And I hope whoever's listening, whoever was affected by it, um, can understand my position on it and know that, you know, it wasn't something that I was, you know, I didn't say it. 
I didn't say to be malicious or anything. It's just something, you know, that I, I kind of only took on board when I kind of first saw the first comment about it. So, yeah, um, in general, I hope everyone kind of accepts my apology. And as an industry, we can kind of move on, but also take responsibility for each other. Anyway, this has been Axiom's intro episode number 898. Again, sorry for the somber note, but I kind of had to just clear it up before I jetted off. I didn't want it to be left kind of like in the air like that, especially after the whole second statement has been put out. Um, I'll, I'll be back again for another episode tomorrow to kind of, you know, refresh it. I usually only do three. I've done three already, but I want to do another one just to kind of give this, because obviously this one had to be a bit, I had to dedicate a bit more serious time to this topic. But again, um, um, I'll check you guys tomorrow. For episode number what zip 99 so that should be a good one i've got a few things i need to talk about that'll be a little bit more light-hearted but until then this has been the excellent zing show number 98 thanks so much for tuning in it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you once again and i'll see you guys again tomorrow